Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comedian and some Olympic news updates for you guys. Welcome back, just arrived in Los Angeles after my 10-day getaway to Belize. That's right, Belizean bad boy, no more, just back to Hollywood hottie or as some call me, dad bod Dave. I ate a lot of carbs on the trip. Time to give up rice for a little bit. All right, folks, uh, we're going to discuss Simone Biles. If you haven't been living um, in a cave, you understand this story, uh, maybe at least on the surface. If you don't, let's get caught up. Simone Biles withdraws from individual all-around gymnastics competition at Tokyo Olympics to focus on mental well-being. So let's get into that. For my mental well-being, please hit a like and leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get up to 40,000. I'd love to get to the old 40,000. We'll do 40 ounces of... We'll do 40s for 40, okay? How does that sound? Live stream tomorrow at 4 p.m. All right, let's jump right into this story. So um, it seems that there's a litmus test that happens in life. People either are on one side of an issue or the other, and we all kind of read a story and then jockey to figure out what side we're on. What side are my people on? There's the shut up and play side of people. You know, if, so, if someone takes a knee, you know, uh, demonstrating their rights to protest or whatever it may be. is oh, shut up and play. You get paid millions to play. In Simone's case, there's the people that say, shut up and do a pole vault or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, just like if you had the mental fortitude, you barrel through it. And that's toxic, I believe, and we'll get into why. Uh, now, Simone Biles, she's, she's, she's had the weight of the gymnastics world on her shoulder. She's greatest athlete of all times within the gymnastics uh, sphere. I don't believe that's debatable. I think we can all agree on that. She's 24, which by all means is very young. I would give anything to be 24 again. But uh, for a gymnast, that's uh, she's, she's, she's been around the block several times, several Olympics, very decorated, decides to uh, drop out of part of the competition and a lot of people can't grapple with why. They can't understand that. Because um, physically, she's fine. So many people suffer so many physical ailments that just to, be fit, just to be physically fit and ready to go for the Olympics is a milestone. But in her case, the yips, the mental uh, ability to control the physical is something that can hinder all sorts of people. There's just most of us, you and I, don't operate under such a microscope where our own uh, yips are present in everyday life. You know, maybe you snap at your boyfriend on the way to work because he didn't make the smoothie the way you like it, okay? That's your yips, all right? Calm down, lower the caffeine in the coffee, and do what you got to do, but you're taking out your own anxiety, whatever. So you understand she has the yips in one way or another. She's got the weight of the world, and she's not performing right in practice, and then in her first vault, she was supposed to do a two and a half twist, whatever the case might be. She only does one and a half, which is extremely dangerous. The fact that she still was able to land on her own two feet, extremely dangerous. But anyway, let's let's just read a few clips about uh, all of the uh, aspects of the game that she has bowed uh, down from and, and decided not to participate in, and what's still on the table. Gymnastic superstar and defending Olympic champion Simone Biles has withdrawn from Thursday's individual all-around competition to focus on her mental well-being. The decision comes a day after Biles removed herself from the team fin um, final following one rotation on vault. She cited her mental health as the reason when speaking to the media following the competition. Okay, so here's my two cents. Uh, my, uh, you know, Not an Olympian. I've played sports my whole life at a much lower level. So this isn't like I'm saying I'm a high school, uh, you know, or weekend warrior, high school, uh, you know, uh, whatever the case may be. But I still play baseball. I play, I play in a very competitive league. I'm 36. I'm past my prime. But the yips are a real thing. Now, the yips are something that happens when you just can't complete a normal task you are used to doing on a professional level. So she might have landed the vault you know, 50 times in a row or landed whatever, but she's just not there. There's something that's not clicking. The more you think about it, the more you ruminate, the harder it can be. You know, I'm no clinical psychologist. Uh, sports psychologists make plenty of money because they help people through these mental blockages. Um, Chuck Knobloch is the example I always go to. He was a professional, I mean, rookie of the year. A, he, he made a big living in the major leagues playing for the Minnesota Twins and then the New York Yankees. He got, he developed such a crazy case of the yips. It cut his career short. He played at second base. The throw from second to first is got to be one of the easiest throws in the history of, the, of baseball to make. He became a professional because of it. Watch this 15 second clip where he airmails the ball. And these are the problems. That have become right there, well watch documented this. Over the last few days, throwing it into the into stands. The stands. Ironically enough, the ball hit 
Keith Oberman's mother. He hits Keith Oberman's mother right there. Maybe there was karma for that son. I'm kidding. I don't know. What do we know about Keith? Okay. The point is, is it's wild that on the professional level, you can have these yips. Now, there are certain sports where yips is a bigger deal. Uh, and I guess in gymnastics, they call it the twisties. So, uh, which I love, twisties is such a better word than yips. Uh, you know, there's, there are, first of all, there are baseball pitchers who can't throw down to third base. You know, professional all-stars, they can't throw the ball to third base. It's like they can only throw it home, and people know that. I've had this as a pitcher. I've, I've airmailed the ball past the first baseman because it's like you're just, you're so many, do this, do that, so many little things. And when you lose faith in your, your sort of subconscious to take care of that, you can get the yips. Golfers who putt can get the yips. Um, you don't see the yips as much in football, except for maybe receivers who start dropping passes they shouldn't drop. That's when you have a chance to overthink it. Football's so reactionary that it's like, Hut, you know, I played high school football, so not a big thing. But of course, anyone who played in the high school, uh, you know, football where football was the big thing in your hometown, everyone in the town's watching it. They're talking about you. You get all this crazy anxiety and nerves. But the second you snap the ball and the game starts, that all goes away for the most part because it's such a reactionary game. Well, uh, games like golf, games like gymnastics, they're not reactionary. It's like you're. It's like a zero sum binary. I'm gonna run up to that vault and I'm gonna either land it or I'm not. And it might not seem like a big deal. It's like, well, so what if she doesn't land it? Listen, folks, I know people uh, that have died doing gymnastics. I, not not firsthand, but secondhand. I know I know people in my family that have done gymnastics with people that have died at competitive levels because they didn't have that in that moment, they couldn't stick whatever the landing was they needed to stick. It doesn't mean they're any less of a person. It just means in so many cases, these Olympians have dodged so many serious injuries. Um, and it's important to know like, hey, I'm not in the right mind space. Maybe tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll have it. But right now, I don't have it. And that's an important place to come from where she can have the have the authority and the confidence to do that and it and it brings up a, a you know a big question in life really where people are saying hey you know now that the pandemic's been going on and raging on for a year and a half we're on the fourth wave the delta variant lambda variant uh, the, i got the dad bod variant yeah that's right this is oh no 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 this is this is just to protect from covid that's why i ate so so many uh, you know fry jacks in belize just to protect from covid that's I'm, I'm protecting a lot of from covid right here too on the sides point being is that a lot of people have jobs where they have to show up to work even if they're having a bad day. A lot a lot of people have jobs where they don't have the control or the power to do what they need to do for their mental health. They just have to tough it out. Now, a lot of people said, well, Simone Biles is 24. Let's go to, let's go to Patrick Mahomes. He's 24. He's at the top of his sport, a Super Bowl winner for the Chiefs. Uh, not last year. That was my boy, Tom Brady. Still rooting you on. Go Bucks. Patriots fan here, but I think we can all suspend disbelief and root for Tom Brady till he retires. Can we agree on that? All right. So Patrick Mahomes is 24. If he decided that he couldn't go on the Super Bowl because of a mental issue, everyone would, would consider him like weak-minded, not a great player. He doesn't have the balls, the strength, the gumption, the killer instincts, whatever. And the truth is that they're different situations. You know, chances are, even though football is a violent sport, chances are if you have the yips and get sacked or you throw an incomplete pass, you're not going to sort of like hurt your career the way Simone Biles could, where they're doing wild stuff out there. Simone's got like, like tricks named after her. She's the best. We've had the luxury to watch the best, but in previous examples where Carrie Strug was 19 and went for the gold with her problematic coach, Bella Carosi, uh, we've learned that like that was probably career ending at 19 for her. And look, there are instances where like, you know, fighting through the pain uh, can, be, can be worth it. And there's a scenario in which Simone Biles decides, you know what, I got this and it could be worth it, but it could also be terribly unworth it, especially for someone who's already proven everything she needs to prove. So a lot of people say, oh, she's letting the country down. What's she doing? It's hogwash. And it really comes down to either we have the empathy or we don't. That's that's what it really comes down to. And I'm not making this a left or right issue, but I do believe there are plenty of people that side on their thoughts with this, the same way they, they, they didn't believe Meghan Markle had suicidal thoughts when she was dealing with the royal family, the same way they were saying, like, shut up, stop taking a knee and go play football. People really do clump themselves into several uh, very basic 
primitive thoughts when it comes to stuff like this. She's making a million bucks. Her whole career has been made off of this. Just shut up and do it. That ain't going to fly today, folks. So anyway, let's go uh, read this article about the twisties, which is a great, tw the twisties just sounds like a great, you know, um, you know, sex maneuver from, uh, okay. Uh, you, uh, she's got the twisties. Do the twist. Um, the twist and the jerk. The jerkies. It's a term that sparked immediate discussion among gymnasts who recognized right away how dangerous a situation this must have been. But for the rest of the world, it's an unfamiliar term. What are the twisties? Gymnasts have described the twisties as a kind of mental block. In some sports, a sudden mental block like the yips in golf may cause to a missed putt or a lost game. In gymnastics, it can cause a person to lose their sense of space and dimension as they're in the air, causing them to lose control of their body and do extra twists or flips. It's, to me, it just sounds like it's, um, it's one of those things where your brain is trying to prevent you from hurting yourself but it's actually making things worse like you need you need to have like clear head when you're doing s such risky maneuvers and the brain saying like oh be careful be careful well like saying be careful be careful is probably not gonna help you land the land the maneuver um the twisties can happen to a gymnast even if they've done the same maneuver for years without problems biles one of the sport's all-time greatest athletes appears to become disoriented while performing a vault on tuesday and stumbled as she landed well as we know she already felt she already f like had had a rough warm up like five hours earlier and was feeling incredibly anxious and all these other things. So it, she didn't have the confidence. Like you know, in baseball, you want to have a good batting practice before the game. You know, in a lot of scenarios, you want to you want to get some momentum going. In stand up comedy, you want to kind of like feel good, listen to some music in the green room. You want to be in the right energy to get yourself to the next level. With stand up, I don't have to worry about snapping my neck if a joke doesn't land, unless someone throws a chair at me. It happens. British uh, gymnast Claudia Fra Fra Fragapane competed at the Rio Olympics in 2016. She fell on the uneven bars in a balance beam in the qualifying rounds. And then in April this year, she again had a fall following a mental block, suffering a head injury and missed the cut for the individual all-around finale in Tokyo. Final in Tokyo. She told the BBC she could understand exactly how Simone was feeling. She has got a lot of weight on her shoulders. Everyone thinks that she's going to be absolutely out of this world and perfect, and she's not human. But actually, she is human. I think the pressure just got too much. Yeah, that pressure, that pressure of perfection. You know what? She probably would have a better shot if she was an unknown person. But everyone's saying, look what she's done in the past. I mean, chances are she might not be as good as she was five years ago, right? The last Olympics for her was five years ago. Most people don't compete uh, at a high level in multiple Olympics with sports like gymnastics. There's just, you age out of it very quickly. It's so tough on the body. The Olympic qualification loomed in April. She was very up and down with her moods, knowing that it could be her last time to try to go to another Olympics. Uh, you know what? I'll say this. Whenever there's a time pressure at heightened situations, to relate this back to stand-up, whenever you only have a short set and you don't land your first joke, you start to get anxious and you, you have this fight or flight moment like, oh my gosh, I can't bomb. I don't want to lose the audience. And sometimes that'll cause you to talk faster and ramble more. And it can be self-sabotaging. Getting yourself to a place of Zen, getting yourself to a place where you're controlling your breath and understanding, like having the positive mantras, those are all the things you need. But even at the top levels, that sometimes isn't enough. Um, Emily uh, said, Simone Biles relating to gymnasts worldwide here. They saw it a little bit in practice, having a little bit of the twisties, the twisties, the absolute worst. Uh, imagine skydiving and your parachute won't open. Your body starts adding extra twists and flips to the skills you're supposed to be doing. And it can affect even the skills that feel as routine as walking to an elite gymnast. Your brain wants nothing more than to perform the intended skill correctly, but your body feels like it suddenly has a mind of its own. Because the twisties are main, mainly psychological, the harder you try to push through, the harder the twisties push back. For a generation of gymnasts, she said mental pain was not seen as a valid reason for taking a break from the sport. Trying to push through the twisties led to a spinal stress fracture, an overuse injury made worse by trying to push through, forcing her to stop competing. Another ex-gymnast, Catherine Burns, compared it to being on a motorway and suddenly losing your muscle memory on how to drive. You're moving way too fast. Okay, so it's example after example of the yips that we see in there. And, you know, I think when people read what the twisties are, when they read about mental health, they have a little bit more compassion and understand, you know what? Maybe Simone Biles muscling through is not as good as the next best person because doesn't the Olympics, you know, doesn't the, gymna the gymnast come with a, like a swing player, someone who can step in, don't they have, is an alternative, you know? So if, if she doesn't feel like she's at her best, now listen, as a pitcher, a lot of times, if there's a couple people in the bullpen and, you know, chances are, if it's your, if it's your day to throw in the rotation, you're prepped and ready to go and you don't pull yourself. But there's a lot of times if you're in the bullpen, meaning that there's a starting pitcher who's outperforming and there's several other pitchers, I might start throwing in the bullpen 
bullpen, another pitcher might start throwing in the bullpen. If I'm not feeling it, shut it down. Because you know what I'm going to do? If I don't have the arm strength I need to go pitch on that day, because of whatever reason, sometimes you get dead arm, tendonitis, you might have had a short, um, short. Uh, you might have pitched the day before, whatever the case might be. If I'm not rearing to go at 100%, the other guy who's rearing to go is going to be better than I am. Better off telling the coach now and not muscling through because it's a long season and it's a long life. Uh, what I'll, I'll say this. Whenever there's a pitcher who's on the mound, and and I use a pitcher as an example because there's always other options. Just like when you're competing on the group level for the for uh, the the for USA, there's like the 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 alternative can come in if she's not ready to go, and it might be hard to imagine how how could Simone Biles not be better than the alternative? Well, clearly, if you need to pull yourself out of competition, you're not right here, and you're not, and that's not going to translate well in a sport that's like milliseconds are, you know, are the difference between sticking a landing and breaking an ankle or whatever the case may be. So in baseball, like if, if the, if the pitching coach comes out to talk to you and you say, Hey, you got anything left? A 99% of the time, the pitcher is going to want to stay in the game. You know, he's pumped with adrenaline. I got it. I got it. Don't take, you know, but 1% of the time a pitcher is going to be like, get me out of here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to look horrible. I'm going to injure myself if I stay out here any longer. I'm blown. I'm done. I'm gassed. And when that happens, the coach is like, all right, let me get someone else in here. Calls a left-hander, calls a right-hander. They get someone in. Because at some point, you understand, like, as much as I want to muscle through this, I've done this game enough, and I know I don't have it. Simone Biles didn't have it. Now, the ovaries or balls on somebody to not understand that is what we're going to get into right now. I said ovaries or balls because I want to be inclusive here. But we've got Pierce Morgan. He's just the... And I get like he prints money off of having this dissenting opinion or this like, you know, this, this opinion that's a little different. Like he's the one who didn't believe Meghan Markle even after he said uh, Meghan... You know, he, he basically had a story where Meghan Markle um, stood him up where he thought it was a date. And Meghan Markle, when she came out with her, you know, all the tabloids are against her and they, they, they think she's trying to you know, rip Harry away from the monarchy, whatever you crazy Brits are doing over there with your traditional monarchy. I look, I know it's a dumpster fire over here too. Point being, he's always just got that sort of like, mm, I'm, you know, point of view that just really doesn't leave any room for empathy. That's what it really is. So he said, new column. Sorry, Simone Biles, but there's nothing heroic or brave about quitting because you're not having fun. You let, you let down your teammates your fans, and your country. Uh, listen, peers, our country left your country years ago because we didn't want to have to deal with a government that's going to have a queen. Okay, you guys get it, right? So <laughs> I just wanted to hit that button. It's been a while. For those that have never watched one of my videos, they're like, what's going on? We're ranting, folks. Deal with it. So um, so anyway, let's see. Um, uh, someone else put, so, so, so then people have immediately posted this. Piers Morgan, uh, sorry, I'm trying to line this up. Piers Morgan on Simone Biles. There's nothing heroic or brave about quitting because you're not having fun. You let down your teammates, your fans, and your country. And of course, this is a gif of him quitting uh, his on-air show. He quit on-air um, after his Meghan Markle uh, blowback that he faced. As I say in the column, I was gutless to walk off, which is why I then returned to my desk. Twitter's rightly mocked me for quitting ever since. Quitting's cowardly. All right, so he calls himself a coward. Piers Morgan is a coward. All right, he calls himself a coward. But what he's not doing is is talking about the idea that Simone Biles and Olympics in general. Let's just let's just end it with this. Olympics in general are a reflection of the best that we have in in humanity in the universe. Right in Earth, on Earth at least, it's the best against the best, and that that the the messages we learn aren't always about who racks up the gold medals. The messages we learn are how to fight fair, how to play competitively, how to be gracious in defeat. Simone Biles, for all the credit and all the accolades and all the gold medals she already has, showed how to be gracious in defeat when her competitor was her mind. How many of us? have our greatest competition, our greatest uh, enemy being our mind, our ego, telling us we're less than, we're not enough. Well, rather than barrel through that, she just wasn't ready on the day. And if you're not ready to go to work on a day and you can call in somebody to replace you that day or take your personal day, our country, and this is weird because it's coming from peers over here in England, but our country is 
has built ourselves on this like we work harder than everyone else and the facts are that ain't it just ain't true as humans we all have genetics to work a certain amount and after that it's fatigue and it's not productive well we have this 40 hour work week where we say we show up to work nine to five and of course 40 hours turns into 60 real quick when everyone's staying late and uh and over hustling and we don't work that much the pandemic showed it people are working at home with their you know their uh, boxer briefs on working half the amount of hours in the country's gdp is just moving along so we're learning that we live in a time uh, a transitionary time where uh, the status quo of muscling through things isn't always the right one so is it heroic and is it brave to say you know what rather than not listen to my brain rather than you know go out there and break something and and fail in front of everybody because i just know i don't have it i'm gonna let someone take a swing here now i understand I do get the Piers Morgan sort of like uh, I, I do I do get the uh, the take that it's not brave to quit. That's very simple. That's a simple take. So I I get it. It it, it makes sense and it's simple. But ch- most in most cases, it's more nuanced than that. And it's not it's not necessarily quitting rather than understanding. I don't have the I don't have the ability to be the best version of myself today. And rather than barrel through that and make it worse, because okay, so she has the chance to compete in all the individual. She made it to the individual fi- finals, right? Is that five competitions? She already decided she she pulled out of the team all around and she pulled out of the all around individual, which is very big to pull around pull out of the all around individual but if she stuck it through and like fought through the twisties and didn't do well she could fail this literally could just be like the yips that ends her career so i feel like as an example for all of us you know the olympics being an example of how to win graciously how to lose graciously and how to uh you know deal with the weight of the world on our shoulders i think it's important to credit somebody for listening to their body and understanding that the body and the mind is more important than whatever physical accolades you can get. And also, not to not mention this, but she's the last remaining Olympic gymnast that's competing that has dealt with the nightmare scenario that is Larry Nasser. okay? The team doctor who, um, under the guise of medicine, uh, assaulted hundreds of women. I mean, a, a brutal story that is just is so sickening and terrible. And for her, you know, I read this in a thread, but for her to think that she wanted to barrel through this Olympics and and be the voice that's like still fighting truth to power, that's added weight on the shoulder aside from proving that you're still the greatest. So it's a very complicated scenario, like most things are. And I feel like the more you go digging and the more information you see, you realize that it's not as simple as as someone like Piers just storming off set. It's not as simple as saying, wow, I want to take the ball and go home. I'm done playing. More nuanced than that, we need to continue to embrace uh, embrace the nuance and not just keep a simple mentality of shut up and play. I'd love to know what you guys think. Leave a comment, hit the like button, and subscribe if you haven't already. we got plenty of other content coming our way, so thank you guys so much for sticking around.